بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers, we are saying that we've got a we've got a whole procedure of making du'a. So we're going to seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. We're going to send salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to ask Allah Azza wa Jal through His beloved names. We're going to praise Him. And now you're ready to to kind of ask Him. Now before you ask Him, there's something special that you can add to your du'as. When we're asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah has said, "Udu Rabbakum tawarru'an wa khufya." Call your Lord humbly and secretly. Allah Azza wa Jalla likes us to be humble. The Quran says, "Wala tajhar bi salatika, wala tuqafit biha, wa btaqi bayna dalika sabila." Quran has said, "Don't raise your voices to Allah when you call Him. Don't put it down so much that it's almost like you're not calling Him, but put it somewhere in between." That's how we want to address the Malikul Muluk, the King of Kings. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He wants to hear us and He wants to hear what we want to say to Him. But before you go into that. Understand that there's something very special that you can add in your du'as, and this is called munajat. Munajat is when we are opening up to Allah with the reasons of why we want what we want. When we are uh, when we are telling Allah about the details of what we want. Sisters, my sisters upstairs. My sisters upstairs, especially with children. My sisters upstairs. Please, please, all the sisters that are there, they've sacrificed their evening. They've sacrificed the evening. I'm still hearing it. My sisters, please, upstairs. There's no need to speak. I'm only going to speak for about another 20 minutes. Your iftar is coming very closer to you. All sisters have sacrificed their evening, and usually we get emails later on saying that uh, we couldn't hear, you know, because of the other sisters talking. So here I am announcing. If you see any sisters talking, please, you know. Gently tell them not to, uh, politely tell them not to speak. Inshallah, jazakallah khair. And any kids up there that are making any noise, please calm them down, bring them back in the masjid. Inshallah. Okay. So there's something special that you can add into your du'as, and that special thing is munajat. Munajat is when I open myself to Allah, talk about what's going on in my life, talk about the finer details, talk about the reasons why I'm asking Allah what I'm going to ask. Talk about the history. Talk about things that have been going on. Now, the way you and a friend might get together at the end of a day and speak to one another about the problems you had during the day, the way you might wind down together as husband and wife or as friends together, you know, over a, you know, just 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 saying that you know this happened to me, that happened. Do you know what happened to me? Oh my God, this happened to me and that happened to me in my workplace. I just walked inside and that guy just staring at me while I just walk in my work workplace. He the guy wants to fire me. The guy wants to fire me. The moment I took a little break from my work, he's looking at me, thinking, how many minutes am I am I taking? And then he comes up with me with a whole pile of work onto my desk and he says, you got till three thirty to get this finished, lad. You understand? <laughs> the guy wants to fire me. Right? And that, you say that to your friends, you say that to your close ones. Why? Because you're trying to tell them, trying to ask for a solution. The same way you go to Allah Azza wa Jal and you explain all of this. Allah knows everything that happened anyway. But Allah loves to hear the details of what happened. Allah wants to know the reason why you're, why you're here, why you're asking for guidance. Now you might say to me, well where is that? To tell Allah about the details of what's going on and about us opening up ourselves to Allah. Well that's in the Quran. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. When he was asking Allah, his dua in Surah Nuh, Surah number 71, is a short dua at the end. However, the, most of the surah, about 60 or 70% of the surah is munajat. It's him telling Allah the finer details of what's been happening in his career of giving da'wah to his people. So he's going to ask Allah at the end one dua. He's going to say, oh Allah, لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارة. He's going to say, Oh Allah, don't leave any of the, these individuals who are denying your signs. Don't leave them on the earth. This is his dua to Allah. He's going to say, رب اغفر لي Allah forgive me. وليوالي ديا my and my parents. وليمن دخل بيتي and those who board my those who come to my ark and they come to my ark and they and they sail with me. You know, forgive all of us. He's going to say that that's his dua. But. His whole, the whole surah 
talks about a long munajat. And what is that? He explains the reasons why he's got to that. What happened in his dawah, the history, what happened in the past, what, what were the finer details? He's going to say that to Allah. In his, in, while he's raising his hands to, uh, to Allah, جل, he says, Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara. My Lord, I call my people by night and by day. فَكُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ And every time I call them to you so that you can forgive them, they put their fingers into their ears and they covered their faces. That's what the young man at the back right in front of that red thing, young man, with, young man that guy with the, wearing the black there, come at the front, come at the front. The angels want to see you, come over here. Come on, come on. Come Sit between these gentlemen here, here, here. Over here, over here. Go over there, go over there. Right in between the gentlemen. That's where the angels are. That's it. Mashallah, mashallah. And every time I call them, he's saying this in his dua. And every time I call them to you, they put their fingers into their ears. And they covered the faces so they couldn't hear me, they couldn't, they couldn't see me. And they became arrogant, they became stubborn. Now subhanAllah, why is he mentioning to Allah, they put their fingers into their ears, they covered their faces. Look at the finer details of what he's saying to Allah. Then I call them Allah in public. And then after that, oh Allah, I announced to them. And I went to them secretly, one by one, calling them to you. And this is what I said. He's saying this in his dua. I said to them, seek forgiveness from your Lord. He is of forgiving. You've got a drought here. Allah will send the rains back again. And Allah is going to extend your wealth and children. Allah is going to create gardens for you again. He's going to create rivers again in this land of a drought. And he said, I said to them all, in his dua I said, أَلَمْ تَرَوْ كَيْفَ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا Don't you people see how Allah has created the seven heavens above? Look, he's saying this to Allah in his dua. وَجَعَلَ الْقَمْرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورًا And Allah has created the moon as a source of light. وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجًا And Allah has created the sun as, as a lantern for you in the sky. And he's, Wallahu أَمَّتَكُمْ مِّنَ الْأَرْضِ نَبَاتَ How Allah gave you cultivation from the land. Anyway, the most astonishing thing he says in his dua is the next thing. He says, Oh Allah, I'm calling them while they say to one another, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ They said to one another, don't desert your gods. These are false gods. They're false gods. Now look, listen to what, what Nuh a.s. does. He says, they are saying, don't desert false God. Oh Allah, in his look, in his munajat to Allah, he said, لا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونصرا They said to one another, oh Allah, don't desert the God of Wad, the God of Yaghuth, the God of Ya'uq, the God of Suwa, the God of Nasr. Don't desert these gods. Now, Nuh alayhi salam has just taken five false God's names to Allah in his munajat, in his dua. Allah reported those five false God's names in our Quran. And we are going to recite them till the day of judgment. Now the question is why? Why would Allah do that? Why would Allah put those names in there for us to recite again? You know why? Because Allah is teaching us munajat. Munajat is when you break the finer details to Allah. So in your dua, if you're going to say, oh, it was Jonathan that did this to me, Henry that did this to me, and Edward that did this to me, or Ahmed, or Mustafa, whoever it was that did that to you, your finer details of what you mentioned to Allah in your munajat is something Allah wants to hear you say. It could be any problem that you've got. In fact, if you want to say to Allah, oh Allah, 
Oh Allah, if you want to make yourselves cry in the dua, I tell you a way to make yourselves cry in the dua. You say, oh Allah, I sinned. And this is how I sinned. Explain the whole system of how you sin to Allah. Say, oh Allah, I went to this place. I shouldn't have gone. And you were watching me. And my feet became sinful for walking towards that place. My hands became sinful. My eyes became sinful. I made my ears sinful. Yet you were watching me. But oh Allah, after that, you never threw me away. After that, you were still kind to me. After that, you, ne you never took, took the gifts that you gave to me away. You were still kind to me. And then say, but oh Allah, I failed again. And I went towards sin once again. Now, you know when you say that, you, you open your emotions to Allah and you open your insight to Allah, I'm telling you, you'll become emotional where you will start to cry or at least you will feel the humbleness in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. Another example of munajat in the, in, in, in the Quran. Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. He's, gone, he's, he's asking for a son for many decades. He's become old. He hasn't got a son from Allah. The reason why he's asking for a son is because sons of the Banu Israel prophets became prophets as well. The sons of prophets became prophets. So he wanted his son to carry on the legacy of the prophets of Banu Israel. And he's asking Allah for a son. Allah, give me a son, give me a son, give me a son. But Allah never gave him a son. Until he reached old age. Imagine this, the same man, the same prophet, hasn't stopped asking Allah for decades. That teaches us hope. This teaches us hope of how to have hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, not to give up. Even if you don't get what you want from Allah, carry on asking. Now what, what does Allah say in Surah Maryam in the beginning? This is the remembrance of the time, the moment when your Lord sent his mercy unto his servant, Zakaria alayhi salam. When he called his Lord in secrecy. When Zakaria alayhi salam called his Lord in secrecy. Now let me tell you one thing, guys. When you make dua, keep it a secret. Don't advertise to everyone what dua you made. You guys understand a secret? No, you don't. Because you live in Kifli. Because um, the moment you have a secret, you wanted, you're desperate to tell somebody else about the secret, right? Do you know I'm not supposed to tell you this, right? But Auntie Shabana, she did this. And, and then she goes to the next person and says, you're my best friend, yeah? Don't tell anyone I told you this, please. It's just a secret between me and you. But you know Auntie Shabana, she did this. And the thing starts going around. Secrets, the best secret you can keep for yourself is a secret that you take to the grave. Or you tell just one person that you can trust. Right? If you're making a dua to Allah, the more secret you keep it, the more ikhlas and the more sincerity you have. The greater the, the greater sincerity you will have, the greater sincerity you will have in, in, in a dua is when you keep it between you and Allah. And Allah loves that too because there's ikhlas. Allah loves you to be sincere. So, When Zakaria called unto his Lord, a secret call in the night time. He said, My Lord, my bones have become weak. My whole head from one end to another end, has lit up with white hair. But yet, I haven't lost hope in you, Allah, that you're going to accept my dua, subhanAllah. Now look at the details. The details, what he, say, he even said later on, my, my wife is barren, but yet I haven't lost hope in you. You know what this teaches us? Munajat. He's given the finer details. He's opening his emotions. He's trying to get Allah's attention towards him. That look, oh, look, look, I've got bones that are weak. And I've got hair that's white. But you know what? I still have hope you're going to give it to me. I still have hope in you. You know what that teaches us? When you see there's no way of you getting your dua accepted. You still should ask Allah. Just ask Allah. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, there's no timing when he can accept your dua. There's no time. Don't give up. Keep on asking Allah. You think Allah might not give it to you? Never say, I made dua, Allah never accepted. Never say that. But what you do is you carry on asking Allah. 
Carry on and ask Allah, oh Allah, please, Allah, give, please, please. And give different reasons. And show different ways of getting his attention. You know, this is something which our ulama in the past, even from the Anbiya taught us munajat. The Sahaba also had munajat. The great ulama, Imam Shafi, and many others had munajat. This is a secret way, a way of calling Allah to get his attention. Many ulama in the past have had that. I'm going to share with you a few couplets of a great scholar, a Bangladeshi scholar in the past, who, uh, who was a wali of Allah, Mawlana Lutfur Rahman, who had munajat. And he goes like this. A few couplets from there. Tamami talif jano Shay khuda Pati derje diya che Dua rodikar All praise belongs to that God, that deity, that one who has given sinners the opportunity to raise their hands and ask him. Sinners the opportunity to ask for forgiveness. He says, So da gore male male bodol so da gore nahi Allah biku kopa gore he says, a tradesman comes to the marketplace to trade in return of some goods. Goods for goods. He said, I'm not a tradesman that has come to you, O Allah, to return goods for goods. I'm a person who's a beggar. I'm a person who is totally madly in love with you. I've come to you. And then he carries on saying, he says, whether you decide to forgive me or not, or whether you decide to punish me, whatever you decide to do, I've held on to you. I've grabbed hold of you. And I'm not going to let go of you. Whether I die or whether I live, I'm not going to let go. Basically, I want your forgiveness. Dustel kukurainu. Duster duare lati danda Maria natarau amare. A friend's dog has returned back to the master, to the friend. It's like he's calling himself a dog. I've been absent from you. I should have been loyal, but I've come back to you. Don't chase me and, you know, just, just beat me out of here. He said, if you beat me out of here, where will I go? I'm going to go out there wandering loosely. I won't know what to do. Then I'll come back to your door. I'm going to keep on coming back to you. Who besides you is going to understand the pain inside my chest? And who besides you can I shed my tears to? Subhanallah. This is, these are ways that they used to do munajat to get the attention of Allah Azza wa Jal. So munajat is something which you can add into your du'as. Again, my sisters, please, please do not talk to one another and quieten the children around you as well. Now, the secret I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you, which you want in your du'as. Once you have this secret, inshallah, your du'as will have a greater opportunity of it getting accepted. What is that? When we come to Allah Azza wa Jal, show him that I am zero. Show him, demonstrate with your words, with your emotions, with your attitude, with your soul, with your spirit, with everything you've got. Demonstrate to him with your beliefs. That, oh Allah, I'm nothing in front of you, you are everything. Oh Allah, I'm zero, you are 100. Oh Allah, I have nothing, you have everything. Oh Allah, I'm a beggar, I'm a beggar, you're a king. Oh Allah, I'm here to ask from you the giver. And oh Allah, I've got nowhere else to go to except for you and your place. Once, once you come to Allah like this, oh Allah, though I'm in a problem, you've got no blame for that problem. I'm to blame for my own problem. Not you. Come to Allah with this. And Allah will answer your calls. Allah will answer du'as. Now let me give you an example. When Nuh had one of his du'as accepted, according to the Quran, 
Surah number 54, ayah number 10 or 11, you'll find it around there. When he made this dua, Allah says, فَفَتَحْنَا أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ We opened the skies with rain which, rain, which caused the flood in the time of Nuh alayhi salam. What was that dua? فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Oh Allah, inni maghloob, I am overcome, I'm overwhelmed, I'm done, I'm finished, I've got no way out, only you can rescue me. Fantasir, send me your immediate help. When he said that, Allah Azzawajal accepted his dua. Another example, when Yunus alayhi salam was in the belly of the whale, he's in the darkness of the belly of the whale. He's been swallowed in. He could die any moment. He turns to Allah from within the darkness of the belly of the whale. Darkness number one. Second darkness is the darkness of the sea at night. Third darkness is the darkness of the rains, rain clouds that are above still pouring over the sea. He's, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him next. Allah says, He calls me from within these darknesses. He calls me and he says, there is no other real God except for you. There is no other rescuer except for you. There is no other deity except for you. There is no one that can help me, rescue me except for you. Subhanak. But God, but God Allah, there is no blame lying on your side just because I'm in the belly of the whale. There's no blame lying on your side. Subhanak means there's no blame on your side. Subhanak means you're glorified. Subhanak means you're perfect. Subhanak means you're wonderful. Subhanak means you're sublime. There's nothing wrong with you. No. Inni kuntu min al I am the one who is of the wrongdoers. When he said that again and again, he repeated it. Allah Azrael said what? فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I answered his call. I rescued him from the distress he was in. And like that, I will save the believers. Subhanallah. This is in Surah number 21, Ayah number 87. You will find the dua there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to Hadith of Tirmidhi, has told us that if you use the dua of Yunus alayhi salam, if we use that dua, Allah will also listen to our duas. Now, why did Allah listen to his dua? Why? Because look, look at the dua. Oh Allah, look, he didn't say, I'm a prophet. I'm inside the belly of a whale. I'm a prophet. I don't deserve to die like this. Why am I here? None of that. He said, blame does not lie on your side. Blame, if there's any blame, it lies on my side. That's the attitude we should have with Allah. You come to Allah with zero, as in I am zero. You are hundred. I need you. I've got no way out. You watch how Allah answers your du'as and your calls. Let me do a quick stats. If you ever were in a situation like this where you needed Allah's help, when nobody else could ever help you, you knew at that moment no one can help me except for Allah. And at that moment you called Allah and Allah actually answered your dua at any moment in your life. If that ever happened, put your hands up right now. Put your hands up right now. Right, see, there's a lot of hands going up. There's at least a good dozen, two dozen hands gone up. We've done these stats around the whole of the country. There's many hands that go up. You know why your dua was answered at that time? Because you had that attitude with Allah. Oh Allah, you're everything I've got. I've got nowhere else to go. You only can help. When you make Allah feel special, He's your one and only. Your belief, your words, your system, everything inside says, Oh Allah, really, I'm nothing. I can't do this. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I rely on you and I'm begging you to show me the way. When you do that, Allah Azza wa Jalla, you know, you know the percentage of you getting your du'as answered is very high. I'm telling you, it's very, very high. And a lot of you have demonstrated that. In fact, many times in my life I've seen that. When you come to Allah and you really desperately ask Him and you make it, you, you know there's nothing else that can help you. That's when Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you His best, the, the best mercy that He can give you. He will show you what the results are. So anyway, my brothers and sisters, it's wonderful having you, uh, you know, having us here that you've asked us to come over here. It's been a very uh, nice evening to spend with you. Thank you all you boys for staying quiet. Yeah? And thank you you three for sitting in the presence of the angels. Yeah, mashallah. Where are they going? Yeah, mashallah. Yeah? Okay? Now, I'm going to pass it over to my brother, Hassan, if he wants to say anything. And straight after that, I think they wanted us to end now 10 minutes before iftar so that they could arrange your iftar, inshallah. So I'm going to pass it straight on to Brother Hassan. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.